I think we should send him to City because his record and Rodri's record has to match. There has to be something. There has to be a divine power which has to make Man City lose. This is the TMZ of football. <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> that's that's all. Dude, I can say. Cristiano Ronaldo's YouTube channel is the TMZ of football now. So. Yeah. <laughs> This is game week 4 and the most uh, the first game for the game week 4 is Southampton nil United 3. Yeah. I'm so mum see you're really happy with this because um it's been it's been a very underwhelming start to the season which is basically I can say the same about United for the last 10 years but um <laughs> but yeah this is the today I mean this this game was was better right like what what is your quick thoughts about this game Yeah. Uh, oh my God! I haven't seen United win in a while, dude. Even this season. So <laughs> good. To, good to get the three points. Um, yeah. Good to see all the boys. Good to see Marcus on the score sheet. Oh my God! Like he's need. He's been needing a goal for so long. They looked after whatever he did on international break. Also, Brad Stein. I guess uh, this time he looked good on the first time. This one, Ahmad looked really good. So. Just like feel like the pieces are falling together a little bit more uh, than the last two three weeks. So yeah, overall can't complain, don't can't complain. Have enough paper over the cracks or actual progress? <laughs> was it a question no, for I, me? I just asked you. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I thought it was a question for, for Vamsi. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I see. I think if you look at the first thirty minutes or so, I think you can see how the penalty ch- miss changed the game entirely, and you can see how open they were. They're being overrun in the channels on the left, and I think. Uh, with with Dallo I don't think it's a he's a makeshift I mean he's a makeshift left back and I don't think that's working out very well they need they definitely need a left back uh, but if you look at the overall result I think that's very uplifting for them especially after what happened the same scoreline what happened before the international break so in that sense maybe I think you know it can take some bit of confidence from all of this but till you I mean the main thing is consistency right i think till they kind of keep up with these performances and churn out these results consistently over the next couple of weeks or so i mean no one's going to be very happy about how things have been progressing yeah yeah yeah, yeah you're right dude neera there is no progress end of the <laughs> year maybe we'll win a cup like that's that's it i mean if we don't do anything more than that then clearly there is no progress because that's what we've been doing the last two years right so yeah, i mean i thought happen. you'd be we'll positive stay until, stay about it in the press conferences <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what uh, was the last time you won anything? <laughs> Can't hear you, mate. That's it. That's it. I'm sorry. We'll 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 save some space for banter. Let's go on with the with the, with our review. Okay, tweet number one. Total football. Onana getting eight point seven stars. What what do you think? <laughs> Onana against Southampton is basically Bruce Lee. Uh, what do you think, man? He's 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 been saving some pens, right, Vamsi? Yeah, dude. Uh, I watched this uh, video. I that should have been a meme. Like when he was on international break, this whole crowd of people. Just like not letting him leave the stadium, I feel like all the Ugandan fans are like, "Bro, yeah. if you don't do well, right, you're fucked." Like they'll mob him doing the wrong thing. So <laughs> not like, Ugandan, bro, Cameroonian. You don't even know your players' uh, country. Fuck off! All the Ugandan <laughs> fans showed up at the game, bro. <laughs> oh, Ugandan fans showed up. Oh, showed up at the okay, game, okay. yeah, at the game, oh. and they were like all doing the same thing that he was experiencing. Back Ugandan then. United think, fans, maybe. Yeah, I think yeah. Ugandan United fans. Said, you remember? I think they were they were doing all sorts of these prayers and everything just before the season started with United. There were all these memes in the social media that okay, uh, everyone's kind of has a get together and then trying praying to the or I don't know. I think it's a picnic or something. Just basically praying for United. I think that's devotion, but. Again, what to what Pam she said? Definitely, they are basically making sure Onana doesn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> This is a red card, Adam. This is that's how it works. We have set our roots in Africa. You can never <laughs> actually Chelsea is pretty big in Africa too. Not gonna lie. Yeah, Chelsea is pretty big in Africa. I was going to say, wait till you see Chelsea African fam. You'll forget yeah, the ones that you I have witnessed so. by now. They are <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's so many players, right? In the in the early era, so many le- African legends. But yeah, uh, yeah. Do you do you think? Do you think he's a penalty specialist, Avinav? Would 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 I say? Would you put him there? Like he's he's good. Um, I know he does a lot of like random shit like this. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> no, I think first of all, it's a poor penalty. I mean, he took. I think that guy took like what fifty seconds. He paused for a lot of time. I think he was basically doing his mental gymnastics within himself. I think it's a very pretty poor penalty. I would say, but again, credit to him that he saved it. But in, I I don't have confidence on anything Onana does, man. I think everything seems to be 
by fluke. I mean, yes, he can save some shots. Yes, if against Liverpool, he'll save some things. I totally get it, but I can't. I mean, I, I can't see the guy who is the goalkeeper of the champion. I think uh, b- before he joined United, he was with, with in Inter Milan. I think he was this. He saved everything. He was this person who got him the Champions League finally in a lot of ways. But I don't see anything of that resembling in United. I think everything seems like either he's you know average at best or he is flukish and then he gets he does his clownish errors. I, I have no idea where how he can progress. Again, as Bumshi said, I think it, it's all coming off as very random. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, Dude, I mean, it's not the first time he's carried a team in a Champions League. We've seen it twice. Um, mm-hmm. Once to the semi-final and once to the final. But what what was good like for them to go there was there's a clear play style. And Inter Milan plays amazing defensive football. I can't say that much about Ajax. Lucas Moura scored a hand to the against them. You know, <laughs> uh, that, that took them over. Uh, but... But, I mean, Onana was not great in that Ajax game. I went and watched the game back and he was not that great. So, he does have these big game moments. moments. Yeah, that, that I don't know. He needs competition in the, in the squad. That's the only way you can iron that shit out. Uh, mm-hmm. And maybe signing someone like Unai Simon, right, at United, is probably the right move. He can, you know, he can go off against Raya for the Spain spot. And then, obviously, Onana is competing for the number one spot. And, Nana is not as good as Unai Simon coming off a Euro win. And it's just also a penalty specialist. I love how Nana did something great and we're still shitting on him, which is like. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> very telling. How, how his yeah, very telling of him. Um, anyway, like he still had a good game. Uh, man of the match. I think. Uh, going, I think yeah, it might be an unpopular opinion, but Anana is a great goalkeeper. I think for goalkeepers to perform, they need to be in a very good mental state so that they can concentrate, which is something in environment that's pretty much available at United because the dude was doing fantastic at Inter. I wanted Chelsea to buy him like he and that AC Milan goalkeeper like them. They were like two of the top goal people in those season mm-hmm. or two but I think the environment at United or whatever it is like there's chaos, there is chaos. So, probably <clears throat> alright um, going to the next step uh, next card uh, Relict scoring a goal uh, and Ahmad having a great game um, Wamsi wh- what do you think about Delict's first start quick uh, the second start first start was uh, Liverpool. Right? He looked really good on the Liverpool game. I mean, uh, sure. This was this was this was a much better performance like from him. Uh, I I expect him to replace Maguire in the starting lineup. So yeah, I mean early days. Uh, but honestly, if he can if he can even like reach to the at least a glimmer of the potential he showed throughout his career, mm-hmm. he's been at top clubs. There's a reason top clubs wanted him. But I just want to know why. Like, I don't want to find out the reason why all the top clubs let him go at United. Exactly. That's yeah. That's that's what I don't want to find out. <laughs> and honestly, it has all everything to do with Ten Hag. It's up to him to set them up really well, especially like in the first phase. And having Lee Cha and Onana, who two two people who know how how to play that Ten Hag style yeah. football, should have even Masawi. His ex teammates, more all of them. Um, Arham, I'd like you to react to this meme. Pedro Neto with 16 goals, but Delict with 29 goals. I think what I can saying? create a similar meme with John Terry's goals and any of Arsenal's or other club top strikers. I think it is. Dude, very, why are you Why um, are you bringing me in, bro? In this, like, <laughs> like what is this? That was just an Keep example. United, mate. Like bro. any of United's forwards or like whoever you name the player. So also Neto has been playing for like Wolves. You know the Haram ball and tennis football that Wolves used to play. And Delit has been in top attacking clubs like Bayern Munich. So I think that's pretty much says it all. So mm. that's all. Okay, fair enough, bro. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Uh, ben Bren- Brerenton Diaz has set a new competition record for the most Premier League appearances without being on the winning side. 18. He's lost his last 11 in a row. Are we buying him at United, Vamsi? Checks all the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> He, he didn't. He didn't start at Ajax, so clearly we're not gonna buy him. But I think we should send him to City because his record and Rodri's record has to match. There has to be something. There has to be a divine power which has to make Man City lose. We need this guy there. He can be Scott Carson's uh, third uh, goalkeeper replacement. Was this guy at Sheffield last year? I don't know, bro. Where he? Well, he looks like he's from Sheffield. He looks like he's he looks- from the golden ages of Britain, bro. <laughs> looks like. It's like he looks like a Game of Thrones character. 
sitting in king's oh, dude, maybe he was in brentford <laughs> dude he scored okay, six yeah. seven goals yeah i think looks brentford. looks very brentford also his Sydney name also brentford. has brentford in. Yeah. yeah, so Brentford didn't win so many games last season. Wow, okay. I doubt he's. I think Bumsy is just saying things. You have to check, bro. <laughs> fact check before you say things on the point. Uh, okay. Um, he's a Sheffield, bro. <laughs> that was yeah. right the first thing. <laughs> Let's go. Ronnie has been speaking. <laughs> Ronnie has been speaking a lot. And then Eric Ten Hag. This is a better love story than Twilight. So, Cristiano Ronaldo on Eric Ten Hag. Man United manager. You cannot say that you're not going to fight for the Premier League or the Champions League. You have to say like, maybe we have we don't have the potential, but we are going to try. You have to try. You have to say all of that. And Eric Ten Hag, in response to him saying that, he said that Man United can't win the Premier League. He said this. If you read the article very well, he's trying to basically Ten Hag is trying to put it all on Ronaldo. Uh, he says Ronaldo is far away in Saudi, far away from Manchester, so everyone can have an opinion. Let's see quick reaction. Uh, this is the TMZ of football. <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> that's that's all. Dude, I Cristiano say. Ronaldo's YouTube channel is the TMZ of football now. So yeah, it really is. It really is. Honestly, I mean, love the court, but I I like that he still likes United, but this Ten Hag is not a likable. He just doesn't respond well to shit like this. You shouldn't be responding to shit like this. If you're exactly. United. I I don't know why he's doing all this. No, I think. I mean, it, do you it, think uh, Ten Hag reacts way too much? Oh yeah, I mean, if you if you take by the. I think the fact that he doesn't he didn't even forget about the Garnacho offside thing yes I think I can see how good he is with reacting or not reacting but I think most of the times these press folks just bait him and they, they bait Ten Hag into responding I think why would someone come into a press conference before a game against Southampton and say okay Ronaldo said this it's not in an official statement that some guy is randomly mouthing in his YouTube channel to his ex colleague and then you just get this up and say okay Ronaldo said this you what, what do you want to say but I think he he responded as well as he could saying that okay i don't care about it. everyone has an opinion he tried to be nice he tried to be normal but still you can spin it in every way you want it to spin uh, but again i think I, i have no idea why ronaldo is even speaking about ten hag or united to be very honest ronaldo doesn't care about anyone apart from himself sorry vamshi uh, but it, you know oh, united, he only cares united. about scoring 1000 goals he exactly. said it on that podcast he, yeah yeah he only cares about scoring 1000 goals he doesn't give a shit about real madrid are not not this uh, not Juventus not United you know people like to think that Ronaldo cares about anything else but he doesn't it's it's very clear his 1000 goals he thinks that he has video proof of all these 1000 goals and all of that he's an embodiment of himself so i don't mean you know, he is just kind of baiting people right now people are just picking those quotes and trying to kind of yeah. get reactions from Ten Hag we have load 1000 yeah, videos on youtube bro so easy <laughs> <laughs> like I don't be the devil's advocate, man. Do you think Ronaldo has been talking a lot, like he, like since he's retired uh, and in Saudi you now, bored with just Wi-Fi and nothing else to do outside? I mean, he has to stay relevant, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I think yeah. I don't think. I think uh, like, sorry, go ahead, Arun. Can you can go ahead. No, no, I was just saying. I think basically at this point of time, he just wants to be relevant in any way possible. Saudi league is kind of you. Everyone knows what the standard of the league is. He knows his career with Portugal is close to coming to an end. I mean, if Roberto Martinez has any. Sort of balls he can, he can, he'll bench him. He'll not start him going forward. And the fact that he's kind of created a YouTube channel and he wants to be the beat Mr. Beast or whoever has the most subscribers on YouTube, you we think he's joking, but we also know that he is not joking. He, he, he wants to beat everyone, bro. Everywhere. He wants to beat everyone everywhere. I mean, that's good for him. But the fact that you know he, he just desperately wants to stay relevant and then look at all of his comments on on Pele and on the other things about uh, the the Portugal game or the, the fact that he scored two goals which are penalties in the euros and all of that so he's, he's just trying to be relevant at this point of time uh he's saying, saying the same I, i think he isn't go ahead i think he isn't getting out of the main character syndrome and he isn't getting the attention Martin Saudi league like that's not pretty much relevant so he's trying his best to stay relevant in whatever way possible like whatever limelight he can get by making controversial statements he will do anything to stay relevant and be the main character you know what i would have really liked ten hag to have said he should have just asked ronnie to focus on winning the saudi league hey you <laughs> want uh, dude you want uh, ten hag i think handle this nah, okay <laughs> Like it, this is like that's what like AJ is saying. This response is one of the good ones. I agree with that because like uh, it's this is not a it's he's not inciting anything. He's not opening things for a back and forth here. This is fine. He's like everyone I can have an opinion. I think that's very 
that's very salty of Ten Hag as well. I think managers in these situations should just say no to management, pass away to avoid controversy for the club's sake more than anything else. Like it just brings unnecessary sort of attention towards the club. You just ignore him, and that's the best thing you can do to Ronaldo to hurt his ego. <laughs> Would literally no other club will have a press conference where the first thing they'll start with is what an ex-player said about the current team. No, 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 no. Then you haven't been following Chelsea's press conferences, dude. (laughs) Ask anything, relevant question ever. Dude, Oba when he started saying shit in bars, the every I feel like every manager faces this. Not like just like the. Ten Hag. But then, obviously, Ronaldo's words reach a larger audience because that's what he's done. So, um, yeah. Uh, AJ is saying, Abhinav, bro, worry about your own manager. He is snapping just after one loss. I don't know. 